Hi everyone, thanks for watching. You can support our work on our website ageoftruth.tv and please like our videos, subscribe to our channels on YouTube, BitChute and Brideon and remember to hit the bell for notifications and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. To be sure not to miss any of our shows, you can sign up for our newsletter on our website ageoftruth.tv Hello. Hey, it's so good to meet you face to face, Lucas. Nice to have you on. Nice to see you. And welcome here on Age of Truth. Huh? You know, I've been watching your videos for a long time. And every time I would say, I really want to have a conversation with him about this. Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lucas Alexander in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the 16th of August 2023 and our special guest today is an American author, esoteric researcher and teacher who specializes in gin demonic possession. She claims to have been demonically possessed by dark malevolent entities and explains how she got rid of them. She also talks about false prophets and teachers within the truth and spiritual community. This is a very large and complex topic, and we'll try to go as in-depth as possible tonight with Maya Sahira. Good evening from Copenhagen, Denmark, and welcome to our very special guest, Maya Sahira from Southern Arizona in the United States. We are thrilled to welcome you on Age of Truth TV. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me on your show, Lucas. It is such a pleasure, and I've always really resonated with your program, so thank you for having me on here today. And to all of our viewers, we're thrilled to see you here today. Do like our video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. We have an explosive and fascinating show for you today with Maya Sahira, who is an esoteric researcher and who specializes in demonic jinn possession. And there are so many things to talk about. It's a very large and complex topic. And we also want to talk about false light teachers and fake gurus within the uh, truth and spiritual esoteric community. And uh, many, and I also said in the introduction that you had been demonically possessed, but you actually say that you were not totally possessed by these dark entities because we want to know how you got rid of them but of course you encountered them severely and i want to ask you whether or not you actually think you were fully possessed by them or not how how were those encounters we want to go into your history and backstory as well but first i would like to begin with some yes and no answers so if you just answer yes and no to the following do you believe that real dark malevolent evil non-physical interdimensional entities exist yes do you believe that these so-called energy vampires can possess and invade any human being at all and that no one can be safe from evil entity possession yes do you think that these vicious entities are demons 
archons, jinn, the Chittahuri, and what other names they have been called in history, mythology, or religions? Are they all the same? <laughs> it's hard to say just yes. Yes, many of those types of entities are involved. Very fascinating. Great. And we'll get into all of that. But this is certainly uh, uh, all, already eye-opening because I asked you if these entities could possess anybody at any time. And this is, I think, will be something that's quite controversial for a lot of people. And you have been quite controversial with what you've written and what you have said. So, um, so I want to start off by um, making a slight adjustment to what was shared before. So I personally have never been possessed. I've never been demonically possessed. But the distinction is that when I was uh, born, my biological grandmother promised me to the demonic forces. So that's actually a whole other story, maybe for another time, because we have a lot to talk about today. But I've definitely experienced a lot of attack. I mean, people would want to know what that was all about. I mean, w w was your biological grandmother a Satanist and involved in satanic ritual abuse? Great question. No, she wasn't. She was a practicing, a quote, good practicing Catholic and what happened in the family was that there was um, some a dark presence that entered into the family that was harassing some of the family members and actually took over one of my uncles. His behavior changed. Um, he was experiencing psychosis. He was exhibiting signs of possession, in my opinion. Um, eventually, unfortunately, he committed suicide. Uh, this, I, I can't remember if it was before or after, I think it was after I was born. But that was very, obviously very terrifying for the family. Now, my birth mother got pregnant out of, quote, out of wedlock. And in that era, in, the, in a Catholic family, that was considered very shameful. And so, what happened, what I believe happened, because I've put all the pieces together in my adulthood, what I believe happened was that that situation was so terrifying for the family members that when that my existence being considered shameful, I was actually sent out of the family. I was put up for I was placed up for adoption. And the, the hope was that all of that darkness would go to me because I was not considered actually a part of the family. I was considered sinful just for existing. And that's part of like that old school Catholic uh, thing. And it was, um, you know, mostly just well, because to protect you were born out of family. wedlock. Yeah. So I, I was considered shameful and I was considered uh, an embarrassment and it considered like my existence was considered a sin because I was born out of wedlock and I was placed up for adoption right um, at birth. And the intention was to send all of that darkness that had, uh, that had harassed my uncle was to send it away from the family into me because I was not considered part of the family. And my entire life, I was attacked by demonic forces. I was never possessed. But I was then adopted into another, quote, good Catholic family. And in my, uh, I believe, looking back, that my adopted mother, my mom, who raised me, was demonically possessed. During my entire childhood, she would have episodes. She would just be speaking in a normal voice, in a normal mom conversation, and then she would stop mid-sentence, and her voice would change into a, a gruff male voice. I would be like a foot away from her. I could see that her eyes changed. Her pupils suddenly went down to tiny pinpoints, and her eyes did not look like her eyes. 
And she would either be screaming about something, or I remember specifically when I was 17 years old, sitting at the kitchen table with her, and she had one of those episodes, uh, you know, she was asking me about my day, and then all of a sudden her voice changed, and she started talking about wanting to murder people. And, and did you feel that this was something, uh, well, another entity that, that, was inside of her or possessed her. And it just, it couldn't just be her being, let's say, mentally unstable to say the least. Right. right. So the thing is, is that when we are raised in an environment and we're so used to it, it becomes normalized. And so when I left home in my twenties, in my late teens and twenties, I, I thought, okay, this person was mentally ill. That's what I believed throughout my 20s. And it wasn't until I really got deep into doing the psychic protection work that I do that I started having these epiphanies <laughs> like, you know, this person was exhibiting all of these uh, very troubling signs. Now, can I prove that she was actually possessed and not some severe, not experiencing some severe, strange mental illness? I can't prove that. It is my belief, though, and my experience that, and also adding to uh, the belief is the fact that I have been attacked by demonic forces my entire life. And that really started hitting heavy when I was a teenager. When I introduce mm -hmm. you here as being, dem having been demonically possessed, and, mm -hmm. and you will explain how, to, how you got rid of all of that then that's not actually correct. You were attacked and not possessed by them? Correct. So um, how I define possession is that it's when an entity enters into you and is either partially or fully in control. And so thankfully, uh, there has never been an entity that has been able to enter me and take control. But when I was, let's see, almost 10 years ago, I had been working for a couple of decades as a feel-good spiritual teacher, as a Reiki healer and retreat coordinator and doing all those feel-good things. And I did come under attack by a false light entity, by a djinn specifically. And I didn't know that it was a djinn uh, when it all started because I was not familiar with all of that. I, I was the feel good spiritual teacher that didn't really believe in all of that stuff. And that entity did reach into my body and it tried to yank my soul out of my body. It did try to possess me and it was not able to succeed that by the grace of the, the divine. I mean, I don't know why it wasn't able to succeed just maybe because i'm so stubborn and i wouldn't leave <laughs> um but uh but so do that we was actually an attempt know to maya whether or not we are possessed by some kind of entities feeding off on our i mean our fears yeah. and anxiety angst and all that do we know that or can, could we actually or some people be possessed but without changing the voice and have it's mm -hmm. almost like acting out a scene from the exorcist Mm -hmm. Yeah, that <laughs> I was just thinking about that this morning that we might talk about that because I have had a lot of experiences in my own life because of being a targeted individual. I've had tons of experiences of people around me getting temporarily taken over by something where then they, the person starts to attack me. Because that they know you. Then suddenly yes. they start acting differently or what and start attacking you. Yes. yes. And, um, but I don't think it's, it only happens when I'm around. I think that, you know, as we go and observe the world, we walk through the world, we see people um, who are not even present within their being and other things are running the show. And I think that is predominantly what is going on with most humans. I think mo most humans who are asleep 
and I say this with compassion and not judgment, but most humans who are asleep, they have other beings that are either fully or partially possessing them, stepping all the way into them, or at least in their energy field, hooked in with energy cords. And, and it's creepy because as a clairvoyant, clairaudient, all the clairs, I see people being run by entities and programs and it's very disturbing trying to interact in the world. You've created a platform called Psychic Protection Sanctuary, where you talk about psychic warfare and you call out a group of spiritual disinformers within the so-called truth and spiritual esoteric movement. And you call them, you call some of them these uh, toxic and dangerous spiritual events that they're that they're doing false spiritual teachers false light ent entities toxic spirituality and black magic and you actually talk you actually mention that this is happening within you know spiritual retreats reiki and healing circles sound healing concerts etc but maya sahira what makes you the judge of that Great question. And I love where we're going with this show. It's uh, all of this information is so important. I will first say that um, I invite everyone to use your discernment. So I don't claim to be all knowing. The information that we're going to talk about right now is based on many, many scenarios with, I don't know, I've lost count, you know, a few hundred hundreds of clients and students over the years, story after story, scenario after scenario of a um, person who's come to me who has gone to a, a healer who has actually harmed them. They've gone to a Reiki class and gotten a Reiki attunement from a Reiki master only to have their energy stolen from them or to have the, the Reiki master psychically attack them. Now, I wanna be clear, does this mean that all Reiki masters, all Reiki classes, all crystal healing concerts, all of it is bad? No, we wanna avoid extremist thinking, but we wanna use our discernment here. And the reality is through through all of these accounts, all of these people that I've helped, I, I've been privy to all of these stories and these scenarios all of these people, and I've seen these patterns over and over again to where, you know, I feel like I can very confidently say that all of us need to use more discernment and we should never be assuming that any spiritual retreat or spiritual teacher or sound healing concert is a safe place. We need to assume the opposite. I think the reality is that a lot of the people who are in the leadership roles, and this is not a judgment, it's just an observation, a lot of them either are in avoidance or, or they don't want to believe in negative energies. There's a very common belief in new age that negative entities don't even exist. So there's this, you know, this lack of um, taking responsibility for cleansing and clearing a class space before an event. So, so we need to quit putting the responsibility for our safety onto the spiritual teachers, onto the Reiki masters, etc. We need to recognize that, that all of us as truth seekers possibly know way more about the spiritual realm than the retreat facilitator. And they may not be interested in or even know about how to keep the space clean and clear. So it'll be up to each of us to do that and to use our our discernment. So I'm not in any way saying that every, like the entire everything is all bad, but I will say this, that um, the majority, so more than 50% in my observation of spiritual teachers, spiritual events, retreats, etc., are um, hijacked or are being run by teachers who are um, either low integrity are abusive, are um, intentionally or unintentionally being run by dark forces, are working with false light entities unknowingly because they don't want to 
even face up to that because it's making them a lot of money to be channeling all of these things. So they don't want to face that, that reality. So more than half of these events and classes and teachers are infiltrated. Uh, the good news is there are good teachers out there. I'm writing a book right now about this issue, about the, the uh, abusive, toxic, um, and uh, uh, these spiritual teachers who are either abusive or like the other end of the spectrum, like absolutely working with dark forces and doing psychic attack and spiritual warfare against their, their clients. That's the third book that I'm writing right now. And there was someone who, who I showed the book title to, and they said, um, well, I'm not so sure about that. It's It seems really negative and it makes it sound like all of it is bad, like all of it is working with dark forces. And I said, well, I think it's important to have the title the way that it is because I think the more common tendency is for people to believe and trust that the healing uh, movement, the new age movement, the truther movement is a safe space, this assumption that it's all safe. You can go to a retreat and just let your guard down and let anybody place their hands on you, mingle energies with everyone, and everything's fine. And um, so I think there's Yeah, this but it is true, though, Maya, that yeah. healing and Reiki healing and sound healing uh, certainly and clearly, obviously, has a great effect on people and, and can yeah. heal you. I mean, the, this is... Yeah. This is something that Very we important. have all seen manifest. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad that you pointed this out. It's really important to be really clear with everybody. Um, I have been a Reiki master for over 20 years. I, I do Reiki every day. I, I enjoy Reiki. So again, we want to get out of this extremist thinking of saying that all sound healing concerts are bad and all Reiki is bad. But the opposite, more common belief is that like, oh, Reiki can do no harm. And if you go and have a Reiki attunement, it's all good. Well, I've worked with tons of clients who've been harmed during Reiki attunements. So we need to get out of that like extreme on one side or the other and just use our discernment no matter what. So it is very important to say that it is certain teachers and certain, let's say, spiritual leaders uh, or self-proclaimed gurus mm -hmm. who can be fake and who may be narcissistic and and working under that or just, uh, I mean, uh, working from that. But you also talk about they could be possessed by these entities and not knowing it. But I mean, a lot of people gravitate to these um personalities that can yes, help them and, and go in the right direction and many people will say wow they really helped me mm -hmm. yeah there was a spiritual healer about 10 years ago in the city where i was living who um was putting himself forth as a shaman and he uh was very beloved by the community at first and then what came out was that he was a sexual predator and he was um, gathering and grooming many, many young women. Uh, and so this, I think he was like 70 years old and he had, his followers were like 18, 19 years old. And uh, he had all these women around him and he would groom them and tell them, oh, your energy is so special. You have such a beautiful spirit, but your sacral chakra is blocked. And the only way that we can open that is if you have sex with me. And he, there were so many victims. I mean, when we were working with that issue in my community, I think we got up to 30 different people that had come forward privately because they were afraid to publicly come forward. And here's what some people said who were against us speaking out about about the issue there were a couple of people who said but he's a wonderful healer my friend has brain cancer and i want to send her to this person because i want her to be healed and i was like gosh i would never in a million years send anyone to this guy like like it's like saying oh like if the devil will heal you 
you know, or, or like some negative entity or whatever says that they will heal you. Will you sell your soul to the devil <laughs> to get a healing? No. Um, it seemed, it was just very strange. It was a very strange line of thinking. So, we also heard yeah. about somebody in, in, in California, I think some failed actor who also created this cult for many, many yeah. years. And there was a documentary about this guy. I forget, I forget the name of the cult, but some son, son, I don't know. I don't know what it was actually. But, uh, and this guy was actually also molesting a lot of the male uh yeah. people that were in in this cult some of those young guys there not only yeah. the women i think a relevant example here would be uh the quote healer john of god in uh brazil and uh this is not secret knowledge this is you know out there on the internet years ago everybody in my community was gaga about john of god and oh you have to go to brazil and get healings from him and his entities will heal you and i would think oh i don't want to be healed by some random entities i don't know what those are and so i never went but then it came out in the news he actually turned himself in he was doing all sorts of uh, you know horrible illegal things and harming a lot of people and yet there were all these people including major public figures who had gone to him for healings and they had been healed of leukemia and other serious illnesses so can negative entities heal a person i believe yes they can and this is a, a trick I, I had a, a colleague of mine saying well you know if it's um Yeah, if it's negative, it can't heal because it says so in the Bible, like only God can heal and Satan can't heal. And I've said, well, I've seen lots of examples of, of people going to um, healers like John of God. If we take yeah. our power back and we don't talk about God or Satan or anything outside right. of us, how about law of attraction or law of manifestation and the, the ability to self-heal? through the power of the mind, which we probably, uh, which is probably something we've forgotten and the human race used way back in the ancient times when our pineal gland was not calcified and we were not dumbed down and under severe mind control and sound healing might all, or sound frequencies were used to move gigantic objects, probably like the, the major stones and the pyramids in Egypt and all that. But I mean, what about self-healing, healing your own, own diseases in the body? And, mm -hmm. and that comes down to your belief in your firm, well, belief that, that you can heal. And if, they believe that that guy john of god and whoever we've heard it many times can heal you maybe they were healed but not necessarily through the dark entities right. or even the light entities if, if that was the, that would have been the case right that's a very good point that it might not have been directly related to the entities it could be uh that the just the belief that Themselves. they were going to be healed yeah Yeah. Now I was um, kind of, I don't know if the viewers were watching my face, but I was trying not to laugh and I was trying not to laugh at myself because I was wanting to grind my teeth as you were talking about the law of attraction. And I will just briefly share why. I am someone who has lived with some very difficult genetic health issues for my whole life. And in the last 10 years, Those issues have, have gotten a lot worse and have uh, definitely made an impact, a negative impact, have definitely changed my life. And um, before things got worse, I was a huge believer in the law of attraction. And I would not even speak the word illness. I wouldn't even uh, mention any health issues because I, be I genuinely believed so firmly I am getting healthier and healthier every day, every day, every day. And I truly believed that. And yet my health declined and these, these genetic disorders got worse. Yeah, but they do and say happened, that the law of attraction cannot hear the word no, or that, that even that, that you attract what you fear as well. So if you were fearing not mentioning the word illness or yeah, could that have attracted all of this to happen as well? 
I don't think there was any, I don't believe that there was any fear. I, I genuinely believed, like I genuinely embodied. I, I am healthy. I am healthy. And so what happened was over the course of the years, as I was um, struggling because I, you know, was having these uh, very painful issues, when I would try to ask for support, like I need assistance with this, or I need someone to just hear me and have empathy, I found that everybody in this or a lot of people in the spiritual community, the law of attraction community would say, no, we actually can't listen to that because it's negative. So I want to point out that that teaching can actually have an adverse effect where, you know, when people actually need assistance. And isn't that, Stu, isn't that just uh, totally blind and, yes. you know, and also, you know, not constructive in any way but Backing if the law of empathy. attraction if the law of attraction is not about just believe or new age thing and okay. what we know from wayne dyer and louise hay and all these people right but and the secret but i mean yeah. which was made very popular and pop culture ish mm -hmm. but i mean if the law of attraction is a law a, tra a, a law of a man manifestation a law that is not about being contaminated by human views of what you can say or not put the put the light into the darkness which is what we should do but if it is about a tr we know if we talk think about somebody they call or we, we'll meet them mm -hmm. in in a few days yeah we know that the law of attraction kind of works it's the same thing with relationships right why we mm -hmm. why we why are we attracting the same kind of people i i do believe that we can attract what we're putting out I do agree with that. I think that if we think about a person, they might call us because they could feel that. So that that's the attraction. Uh, we can attract certain things, certain opportunities into our lives. But we also need to remember that there are other elements. And I think this is what a lot of people forget, uh, um, that you know there are all these other aspects that contribute to what is showing up in our lives. For example, the idea that not only do like vibrations attract like, but also opposites, opposite vibrations attract. So bringing it back to the spiritual warfare issue, a lot of people get confused and a lot of people judge people who have gone through spiritual warfare, judging them as, well, you must have been low vibration to attract that to you. When actually what I've observed with a lot of clients has been that these are people who ha have so, they embody so much light and beauty and purity. And that is what the darkness was attracted to. So it's this opposites attract. So we have the law of attraction like attracts like, and then we have opposites, opposites, opposite vibrations attract. And then we also have like the, we have um, karmic imprints, we have karma, we have like the collective consciousness on the planet. So you, you might have a great mindset and be using the law of attraction in your favor for your health or your finances or whatever, but the, uh, the consciousness of your city or your country uh, my, um, the collective of that might be having an impact on your ability to manifest. I do think that, that all of what you just mentioned is totally real and is absolutely yeah. true. But don't you think that, I mean, certainly in, in recent years, let's just say the last three years, it's like even if you live in this city, uh, we're in, I'm in a big city or you're in the desert yeah. or wh whatever community we're in, it's almost like some of us who are, seeing the world in a very, very different light. We live on a different planet in a different city, and we are not part of that community, even though we yeah. are. So, I mean, it's like the collective, uh, the collective consciousness yeah. is breaking away from our sphere and our way of living, our, our lives in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think there are just so many facets and like this thing is true, but also this thing is true. And also this thing is true. And I personally have experienced what you're talking about where um, like the more that I uh, evolve um, that 
the more I don't fit in with the collective and I'm not even affected by a lot of the programs that are going on. And I think that's what you were saying as well. Exactly, it was. And now that you're still on your, uh, we talk about your history and your backstory, and I, I did say in my introduction that you had been demonically possessed. So, but I mean, this is a very strange topic because how do we really know how we're acting out? I mean, you obviously had that horrible experience with your mother uh, speaking in tongues or whatever she did and changing her I mean, pupils and eye. We've heard that a lot. I've talked to a lot of people who've seen the eyes change on a person, mm -hmm. which is very frightening. Would you say it's like, was did they turn black or like reptilian as some people uh, have seen? Right. So I, uh, her eyes did not look reptilian. Her pupils went down to impossible pinpoints. So also to, to distinguish from the eyes that turn completely black, her eyes didn't do that either. They didn't turn completely black. They, the, her pupils went from normal just down to a tiny point. And I wanted to answer your question about how do we know? Like, how do we know if we're possessed? Like maybe we are and we don't know it, right? So I think the answer to that is maybe we never know fully, but the key is to become as self-aware uh, and as embodied as possible. Because when you're self-aware and you're used to checking in with your emotions, checking in with your thoughts, checking in with your energy field, then it's a lot more obvious when something has entered in. And I notice that most people who are more easily taken over are people who ha who just um, they haven't developed that self-awareness or they're very ungrounded or disembodied. And so I think that's the key for everybody is self-awareness, really know yourself. And yes, sometimes we get triggered or maybe we lose our temper or we get angry. That doesn't always mean that it's an entity. It could be some of our own unhealed aspects. But the more you know yourself, the key is to recognize if there's a sudden change. Do you feel a sudden change in your energy field? Is your behavior suddenly different? Do you feel out of control? Or uh, do other people report that you've act, acted strangely and you don't remember, uh, you don't remember periods of interaction? That's a red flag as well. That's an obvious sign, certainly. Yeah. But I mean, how about addictions? Because I think a lot of people watching this, and we've talked about this on the show, and also about, you know, if these uh, entities feed on your, let's say, weak points and, and, and all the, your weaknesses and addictions. I mean, it's not, you, you don't have to be, let's say a heavy drug addict to be an addict because we are sugar addicts. We are, ad we can be addicted to, well, s stimulants or drinking or just w whatever, sex. Yeah. Yeah. So I do have some things to say about addiction. So the first thing is that, um, in some cases, there is a natural genetic tendency that somebody has to, toward a, a um, certain kind of addiction, addictive behavior. And so that, that um, uh, they already have that tendency, right? And then an entity or entities comes along and tries to activate that addiction that's not active yet. But let's say there are um, uh, discarnate spirits, human souls, human ghosts who are um, earthbound and still work and still walking the earth plane. And they were drug addicts or alcoholics or whatever kind of addicts during their physical incarnation. Then they will want to seek out and hook into a person who has the same or similar tendencies. And then what they will do is they will hook in basically an energy cord into that person and feed those urges to that person. And either they will hook into the lower chakras or they'll even hook into the back of the head and feed directly into the brain to get them to desire that addictive behavior. So sometimes 
it's all the entity interference, but a lot of times it's a mix where the person already had the potential, uh, but they weren't acting it out yet until the entities came. And then when someone is trying to be in recovery and they're trying so hard to kick their addiction and they're going through all the 12 steps or whatever method they're using, sometimes it can be so difficult. Well, it is difficult no matter what, but it's so challenging because they also have entities attached to them. So here's this person in recovery for maybe a month or a couple of months, and there are these entities clamoring for them to start up the addiction again. And this is why anybody in recovery should really seek out a qualified shaman or healer to help someone who understands entities who can remove all of that so the person can really move forward in their recovery process. So should they talk to a shaman or a healer or whoever you mentioned here before they go into therapy, like 12 step or whatever, they go through a program or should they do that after so that they don't lose the, the well, the direction they're going and don't fall back into those old habits and addictions? I think I, it really depends on the person. Uh, but I would, my feeling is I wouldn't try to go too far into the recovery process without some spiritual support because I think both aspects are needed. The, the therapy or the support group uh, uh, and the social support along with the spiritual support as well. What was the worst experience you had, let's say, facing a demonic entity? Have you ever faced... It. Have you seen what such an entity looks like? I've actually had so many encounters with with uh, demonic entities. It's just been like a part of, of regular life. I wonder if it's okay with you. I would like to talk about how I encountered a jinn inside a Christian church. What do you think about that? I think okay. that sounds very, very interesting. We want to hear uh -huh. it. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, because um, this is very different, and it might blow some people's minds. Because there's this a very common and comforting belief that if you're in a church, you're protected, or if you believe in God, you're protected, or if you have a high vibration, you're protected, and, and nothing dark can touch you. Well, um, after I had had a handful of very jarring experiences with gin already. So I already had some knowledge about it. I was in a Christian church listening to, it wasn't during a service, but it was during a presentation. So I was listening to this presentation. I was sitting next to my friend and all of a sudden um, something hit me on the right side of my head on my temple area. And it hit me hard and it was like somebody hit me in the head and it happened so quickly and so unexpectedly that i grabbed my head and i said ow <laughs> and then with my hand still on my head i looked up to see what had hit me and that was when i saw a huge energy a huge entity now remember i had already had a couple of very jarring encounters with gin, so I knew what they looked like, felt like, sounded like already at that point. So I looked up and I saw the largest gin that I had ever seen. The, their quote, natural form is plasma. It's like electricity energy. And it was this big, so, so that's what they look like when they're not shape-shifting into whatever they're pretending to be right and so i see this big entity it was it was covering almost the entire um uh congregation and when i looked up i i saw this i immediately recognized it as a jinn and it was putting out this energy that it was pretending to be god for these worshipers that blew my mind because I had already experienced and witnessed jinn pretending to be angels, pretending to be fairies and elementals, pretending to be demons, which is real tricky, pretending to be a whole council of angels, pretending to be 
aliens. I mean, I, I there was one particular gin that shape shifted into all these different things to try to scare me. Um, and, and this was had been a couple of years prior to the church incident. And but it never occurred to me that it would even be allowed for any entity to try to pose as God, like God wouldn't let allow that, you know, or that it would be against cosmic law or whatever, like, how, how is that possible? But this entity was doing it, and it was checking in on its disciples. And what I've learned about Jin is that they, they love to feed off of people in two ways. Number one, either by creating um, suffering, chaos, and pain, and feeding off of that energy or initiating uh, feelings of bliss and worship because jinn love to be worshiped. They are psychopaths that, that have the biggest egos and they feed off of the energy of worship. So if they can get someone to think that, that they are an ascended master or Jesus or Archangel Michael, so that they they will be adored they get their kicks off of that so that's yeah, but a pretty did other people story. in that church also see that jinn uh pretend to be god right that's what's been so difficult is that um several years ago when i went through that first trauma where that jinn reached in and tried to tear my soul out of my body that actually that trauma that that um very intense situation created um a series of downloads for me and also the ability to see false light to see false light entities and so i'll say it has not been easy because Ignorance is bliss. I used to go to spiritual events and it was so uplifting and wonderful. And then after that, I was going to spiritual events, psychic fairs, and I would walk around and I'd be like, that person thinks they're channeling so-and-so and I can see what it actually is. And I would walk around and it was, I would see what was actually there and it was very disturbing and upsetting. So your portal, and, your portal was open to see yeah. and witness the, the, mm -hmm. the this energy, mm -hmm. this plasma, this gin. But yeah. what about the other people in that church? Yeah. Could they? So see in the it? church, they all thought that it was that. So they weren't clair clairvoyantly seeing anything. They, if they were feeling something, they were feeling the presence of God or so-called God. So they were so, feeling no. something, but they didn't see it. It's not like they walked out of church and now they have actually seen God because that would yes. create, you know, something quite yes. extraordinary yes. for a lot of people. Huh? Right. Right. So a couple of points. First, um, that situation in the church made me think about some of our religious stories, like the story of um, the... Um, the burning bush about the boom, the, the uh, booming message from God and the burning bush uh, that's talked about in the Bible. And I thought, was that really God? Because every experience that I've had with Jin, they have had the loudest booming voice, booming voice. That is one of their, their um, indications. The other yeah, thing but that's mentioned is, also in the Bible, isn't it? A, a, vo a yeah. big voice like God. But most of the, I mean, the Bible is written in code, right? That's uh, symbolism for something else for our past history that we're not allowed to know for one reason or another, right? Right. I think what I'm pointing out is that um, as human beings, historically, we've had experiences or there have been um mythologies or actual events that um, have been written about and people were trying to interpret what it meant. So I think what I'm saying is, let's say there was someone who saw a burning bush and heard a booming voice and that not knowing any better, they assumed that must be God. And maybe it wasn't. Do you think For it ever years, is? I'm sorry to jump in, but I must. Yeah, it's okay. Um, um, yeah. Do you think it ever is God? 
what is God? You know, I mean, this will certainly be a controversial thing for a lot of viewers. But I mean, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I heard the voice of God. I heard this and that. We've heard that throughout the ages. Is that mm -hmm. fantasy? Do they hear something? Is it like a schizophrenic hearing voices? And are those entities as well? We've talked about this also on the show. Yeah, this is a really big question. So um, I think what I'll say is after everything that I've gone through and everything that I've seen and experienced, I no longer believe in capital G-O-D. I think that there are a lot of illusions and there are a lot of things that people have experienced, like you said, that they, they assumed were experiences with God. And, uh, it was actually something else, whether it was a gin or it was some other kind of entity, or, I mean, there's so many different possibilities because there's a lot going on in our reality. So it's not just gin, right? Um, I personally do believe that there is some kind of a divine source creator, but not the oversimplified version of the psychopathic Judeo-Christian God that, that um, you know, murders entire populations <laughs> and um, is jealous, you know, like, like how it's very um, like, all of those ideas of God, uh, those are all descriptions of narcissistic behavior. And yet, you know, on social media, we're all talking about like, this person's a narcissist and how do I identify a narcissist? And yet we don't really look at the fact that this, this God, this capital G-O-D that we are taught to fear, um, those behaviors are very much equivalent to narcissistic behavior and yeah, but everything i don't want to upside down that. huh i mean the whole world is upside yeah. down everything they teach you you have to like turn it around and then you'll see the truth and get the truth and they if they want to create something that you have to worship and the whole world have have to worship in one way or the other whether you're whether you are a christian a jew a muslim a hindu or whatever i mean it's the same yeah. type of entity right just with a different name or a different face and what you're talking talking about this Christian version with the, the old man with yeah. the long white beard on a cloud and all that. But I mean, if we talk in terms of this is source, would you say a source force creator, then that's the all powerful, let's say energy. Why would that, if we call that God, or if we call it source, why would source God, whatever you call that all powerful and energy, why would that allow these dark entities, these jinn, archons, demons, whatever you call them, to create all of this havoc and madness on planet Earth within this matrix? That is the ultimate existential question. And I just did a, a Zoom class on that, I think last week, two weeks ago. And... Um, I think this is something that we humans who are awakening have to question and think about. And I will say that my beliefs about it are going to continue to evolve, I'm sure. Um, when I first started to have these experiences with Jin, I, I spiraled into existential crisis because I used to believe that God protects you. And I had to ask, who's in charge on this planet anyway? Uh, we have this belief that God is in charge or the angels are in charge or the positive forces are in charge. But then why are people allowed to be attacked? And I don't think I have the ultimate answer on that. But I think that um, there, there's two aspects to this. The first is that... Um, that I do think there are some cosmic laws, but the dark forces are not interested in following the laws. I, I, what I've observed again and again is that the positive forces, genuine angelic forces, let's say, they, for example, will not impose upon our free will. Let's use free will as an example. Negative forces, demonic forces, jinn, and etc. 
they are not interested in um like abiding by our free will so they will try to find ways to trick us or to get us to make an agreement to something uh there are i have a section in my book about soul contracts everybody believes that you know all soul contracts like it's all good even if you have these terrible things happening it's all good well my belief my very firm belief now based on everything that i've seen is that there are some soul contracts that are hijacked so even on the other side when we're out of physical incarnation there is dark forces interference where sometimes people are sent into the wrong family line so that they will be abused and squashed down their light will be squashed or they are sent into a body that has particular issues to make it harder for them to fulfill their life mission etc so part of the answer to your question is that um the the light forces the forces of good they are abiding by cosmic laws for example our free will dark forces are going to find any loophole any way to break those cosmic laws um because they're they're not honest we we want to think that energies that are bad are coming from the same good heartedness that we are and they're not uh, and it's not fair um so anything you want to add to that yeah because what you're basically describing is the system we're living in the political yeah. system the monetary system the media the school uh, the educational system the school programming that's basically the mind control and not at us not having free will and you are a rebel if you stand up and proclaim and say that you you have the right to have your own free will to do whatever you want in this life unless you uh, i mean ex unless you hurt somebody else so i mean this is basically just the down to earth system you're describing here just in more esoteric terms which is leading me to believe that everything is steered this is what we've been talking about many researchers have talked about this that we have what we are being steered by these interdimensional or or even extraterrestrial entities and um, and maybe aliens uh, involved as well behind the government uh, structures and and all of that um, and that is a very that's very interesting that's a very interesting topic to get into if these demonic entities do steer the planet here could that be because we in some kind of way have been, it's, it's been allowed that we are on this prison planet or has the whole planet and the system here been hijacked by these demonic entities do you think well i don't know if this directly answers your question but this thought that we as humans are special and we're more special than the insects and the animals and the trees uh there's this belief that like well we have dominion over the planet and and bad things won't happen to us but we can kill ants and mosquitoes and that's okay like and and there we actually live in a system where all sorts of predatory things are allowed to happen in nature and quote divine source whatever you want to call it, or the system is neutral about that like but could that be programming as well could the whole animal yeah. kingdom that are really violently evil really towards each other and of course mm -hmm. they they call all the animals well, it's the instinct and the the, the mm -hmm. predators and all of that they have to feed on on other uh life forms but i mean it could yes. all be part of a bigger game like a, like a sophisticated computer game and this is a holographic simulation and we're playing mm -hmm. we're in this game like like the matrix obviously like avatar in a way yeah 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 it could be um i i try not to say things in a definitive absolute way if i don't firmly know it to be true as my truth but i will say that i've had a couple of really strange experiences that have made me think that we could be in some type of simulation 
there have been two different times when just randomly in the middle of my day, I heard a computer voice say, hello. And I can't imitate a computer voice, but just imagine like that pixelated kind of sound. And I was like, okay, I've heard entities because I'm clairaudient, but now am I hearing AI? Am I hearing like, you know, the, the grand like master of the matrix? Like what did I just hear? And, and I had that happen two totally different times. And another but that could, would... may, may I just jump in here before yes. you you, you mm -hmm. mention sure. your second experience? That could be what what is known as vo voice uh, voice of God, um, voice or to skull voice, technology, vo voice to skull technique. Yes, which yes. they used in the Gulf War or in the war in, in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and all of that, mm -hmm. and they can use that mm -hmm. through directed energy weapons mm -hmm. or. Harp mm -hmm. or whatever technology they they have developed yeah. a long time ago. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I do think uh, that that's a possibility. Uh, it's very interesting that wherever I live, there are airplanes or helicopters flying over my home multiple times a day. I can't say for sure why that is happening. I can't. Pr I can just have you know a conjecture of. Uh, that does seem strange. I wonder what's going on. I've had a sense that there have been directed energy weapon um, technologies being used from those airplanes. Um, that's been my intuitive sense. Um, to um, I've had multiple experiences where I've been outside, I see the airplane fly right over me, and then I have a sudden dip in my mood or suddenly I have a, a um, very unexpected flare-up of a painful health condition. And, it, and you're it in the like desert, will... right? You're in the desert in, in Arizona, and you uh -huh. still have those helicopters and planes flying over your yeah. house in your area? Yeah. But do yes. you know there's a military base nearby where, you, where they, they have many bases there? Right. So um, I do live not too far from an airport so we need to balance things with like just standard knowledge there is an airport you know i don't know maybe 15 minutes away um the when i lived um outside of kansas city out in the country out in the middle of nowhere uh out there it was helicopters all the time and they wouldn't fly over any of the neighbors they would fly directly over my house and they would fly really low and I wasn't anywhere near uh, near an Air Force base. So again, this is one of those situations where we have that big question mark, like, hmm, this seems kind of weird. Um, I may never know, but uh, yeah. So I'm very familiar with the voice to skull technology. I've read about it. I, I've had, I, I do believe that it is something that's happening. I mean, obviously it's been used by the military, so it's just common sense that they're still using it. Are they absolutely using it on me? I can't say that for sure, but are they using it on people? Of course they Psychiatric are. Psychiatric patients, uh, obviously, the, the mm -hmm. many people or researchers talk about that they're using it on people who have we're on that yeah. frequency and maybe they can receive it or they can direct it um, into somebody's brain or into somebody's mind. Um, yeah. And, and people go crazy basically, or that's maybe not the right term, but uh, I mean, obviously you would, if you would hear those voices, right. And maybe it's not a natural yeah. phenomenon happening to people with mm -hmm. schizophrenia, or at least that's what, what they're being di diagnosed with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so there that that kind of equipment is causing uh, synthetic telepathy, essentially synthetic telepathy, where messages are being sent into the person's head. And yeah, uh, uh, obviously that would make a person feel crazy if they have thoughts in their head all the time. And that could happen with the new AI super brain computer that we're being linked to now, right? Through the smart grid and whatever people have of special interesting things they put into their bodies. Yeah, I'm 
yeah, I'm not feeling so good about the AI <laughs> right now. Um, I don't know exactly what the future holds with that, but um, I can share another little story that I was um, looking at my phone. I was scrolling and uh, there was this Facebook ad that popped up and there was a person speaking and I, of course, I just assumed it was a normal like advertisement, uh, but I immediately felt very disoriented and very sick and dizzy. And I thought, what's going on? And as I heard the person speak, they said, did you know that this video is completely AI? You think that you're watching me speak and this is not even a video of me. This is completely AI generated. And I, I happen to be very, very sensitive. I'm sensitive to all sorts of energies um, and um, Wi-Fi and all of that. So it didn't surprise me that I was very sensitive to this AI interaction. It made me sick. Absolutely. It's horrible. It it's horrible. I've seen some of those too. And you don't know what is real, what is not, if what you're seeing on the news is real. They probably had this technology for years and years and years, and now they're releasing it to the public, but they probably, well, perfected all of this AI stuff for a long, a long time ago, because they talk about the military has technology that's like far ahead in a few hundred years ahead or more than what we are allowed to be informed about but i mean uh you were also talking about another incident where you kind of felt that this was a simulation matrix. or holographic matrix yeah. that we're in yes so this was uh, about five years ago and i was um, still living outside of kansas city and i had made a trip to arizona to see if i was going to move to this area and I was on my way home. I was staying at an Airbnb, so I was not at my normal home. And I was um, just sitting there in the room, and I made a decision that I was going to move, and I was going to get an RV, and da 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 And so what happened in that moment was, like, I literally was deciding to change my life, right? Like, okay, I'm going to do this thing totally out of out of my usual element. But here's what happened. As soon as I made that decision, everything around me turned black. There was, I was in a total void. There was nothing around me. And I was like, what happened? It was as though the construct disappeared and had to rebuild because I was going on a different timeline. And it was about a full five to eight seconds that I was nowhere, or I was, I don't know where I was. And then the room appeared again. Wow. And my, my, my interpretation of why that happened, because that's the only time that's ever happened to me. My interpretation was that must have been because I stepped outside of my usual behaviors and the matrix program had to repro had to like reset or something like that. But will I ever know? No, but it's, it was definitely weird. And it made me think that really felt like a matrix um, kind of s situation, right? That definitely was not normal. But do you think what we talked about before that we are, we have been like enslaved, that we are in this let's uh, confinement or the, this in, in this box mm -hmm. that are called the matrix that we are part of this. Yeah. I think there are so many possibilities and I have most certainly um, considered the possibility that we are in an unnatural environment, a simulation. And one of the things that, that makes me lean in that direction is the fact that when I go through the world and I see people being run by programs and they are not even aware of their own behaviors, to me, it seems like it feels like a computer program. And I, and, and I know uh, I used to just believe that there are just a lot of people who aren't awake yet and that that's natural. But in the last few years, I've had multiple experiences where people act like they are a computer. I lived with somebody a couple of years ago 
who started to act like a robot and her eyes became very vacant and she would move in this robot way and she seemed completely unaware of her behaviors and um, observing that and living with somebody who was doing that, I thought, this is someone, it, it makes me think of that idea of non-player characters in the video game, of people who are like extra player, who are extra characters to interact with us and mess with us um, and activate Lush uh, so that that can be fed off of um, and to just mess with us. And also to, I think there's some like testing and experimentation going on in regard to um, setting up scenarios for us to see how we will react. How's Lucas going to react if we send this programmed person to do this and act out on him? And let's see what happens. And I, over the last couple of years, I've, I've had a very strong sense that it's not just a feeding ground, but it's like a testing ground of, of like testing our reactions and responses, kind of like we're, we're lab rats. Do you think that there some human beings are soulless beings? I do. I think there are some human beings that I would maybe... I'm a little hesitant to say this because I think we need to have compassion and empathy to all beings or, or so-called beings. Um, I don't think we need to um, like randomly throw people into the garbage and say that that person isn't a human and like not uh, treat them with respect. But with that said, I do believe, or I suspect, I strongly suspect that there are many uh, people on the planet who could possibly be non-player characters who are like just pr presences that are part of the game. And therefore they don't have a soul essence. I, I have been suspecting that, especially in the last couple of years, as I've interacted more and more with these people who seem like they're being run by programs and there's no real awareness there. Uh, I think it was David Icke who said that somebody was walking on a field or in a on a street and they saw a burning house, big burning house. Okay. And then um, they called the fire people and, and all of that. And everybody said, but there's no house there. There's mm -hmm. there's no house, not been a, a fire. And mm -hmm. then they looked into the records and they could see that there was a house and it burned down, but that happened like in the 17th century or something. I mean, a long time ago, it was like almost like there's been a glitch in the matrix and suddenly they saw something happening, but on a different timeline. So um, that kind of, that's it's an interesting topic as well. If all of these timelines that we've had, that we know about, if they're exist coexisting, ex existing at the same time, right now yeah and i i do feel like there are multiple timelines existing and it's kind of mind-blowing um there are i'm sure there are times when many of your viewers have felt and have felt or perceived another timeline bleeding through where they're experiencing um some slight difference in their timeline but then they bounce back to where they were before so sometimes we kind of bounce back and forth between similar timelines and with the house situation i immediately was thinking of another parallel timeline that may have been bleeding through that that house didn't burn down like in this very similar and very close parallel timeline that house was burning down on that day. And there was a little bit of bleed through through the different timelines. That's a, a possibility. And it could also be, like you said, um, a glitch in the matrix where something from the past is showing up in the present. Totally interesting. And also if these, uh, if these entities you talk about, if they can jump from timeline to timeline, and if there is a karmic 
connection to your ancestors and if some of those beings can possess generationally um you uh -huh. and and if they even if they possessed your parents or grandparents or something so i've actually worked with a lot of clients who have had ancestral entity issues where there is a, a particular entity that is following down through the generations so it it would attach and perhaps even possess um, onto one particular family member and once that family member dies then it would go down the generation to the next person and the next person and that is something that i see quite frequently as as i'm working with clients and we're trying to figure out their entity issue sometimes it's an entity issue that is a standalone entity issue something that they have um, accidentally run into in this lifetime they were at the wrong place at the wrong time or they accidentally were living in a haunted house and this thing uh, glommed onto them or sometimes it's that this thing has been passed down through 10 generations and there's a different approach to clearing that if it's ancestral versus if it's just in this lifetime that's very important because people don't know if it's actually not even their own, let's say, problem, but if it's something from the past and from their ancestors, how do they discover if it's one thing or the other, and how do they get rid of these entities? Part of the discovery process is for the person to work on developing their inner guidance also called their psychic abilities their ability to tune in um, and and thankfully i have spent many years developing those skills myself so i'm able to um, do a reading and um, discern and i'm able to see and discover uh, where this issue is coming from and so the client and I work together as a team, uh, they'll share part of their story and then I'll say, well, I'm getting this thing too that they didn't mention. And then we put all the pieces together and we're able to see where it, where it came from. And sometimes it's not ancestral, but it's past life where one person has had an entity that has followed them through the past five lifetimes. So it attached to them, let's say five or seven lifetimes ago, whatever. And it has followed them from lifetime to lifetime. Very, very important point there as well. Mm -hmm. Would that be DNA cleansing you're talking about or something more profound, if there's anything more, right. more profound? Right. So for something that's ancestrally passed down, we would be doing a lot of ancestral clearing, not just clearing the person's DNA, but also going back in their family lineage and doing a lot of energetic clearing of all of their ancestors. And every scenario is different, but it'll involve ancestral work and also DNA work. When it's a past life issue, then we're gonna be going back and clearing past lives. We're gonna go into their Akashic records, their, their records of all of their lifetimes and work on rewriting those things. But there's another important factor and it's that the person who's dealing with this not only is receiving some clearing sessions, but they are also looking at their life in an honest way and figuring out any root causes, any ways that they are making themselves vulnerable to this entity issue or, or spiritual issue persisting. For example, if they're, um, and I, I believe in personal freedom, so everybody y'all do whatever you wanna do, but um, if they're using a lot of recreational drugs, then that is making their energy field porous so i could do the most amazing clearing sessions for them for example but if they're engaging in that kind of activity and it's weakening their energy system there's only so much that i can do another example uh, a specific um, client example that i recall was there was a woman who was dealing with all sorts of um, entities and dark um, interference and yet it was actually coming from her partner 
who was not willing to work on his stuff. So I did a handful of clearings with her, but she was unwilling to make a change. Like he was not willing to change. He has free will. That's his choice. She was choosing to stay in the relationship. That's her free will. But I can't like force a person to become clear when they're still swimming in the toxic waste lake that's causing them the the issues. But why do you think that a lot of people, when they like end the relationship and maybe, you know, it was a, maybe it was a really toxic relationship and it ended on a, let's say on a big bang and not a good bang, yeah. <laughs> but then they'll meet somebody else and yeah. more or less that person will turn out to be exactly the same as the, 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 the person they just left and they'll mm -hmm. repeat that cycle of going into the same kind of toxic relationship we also know it from certain women who are getting getting beaten by their husbands and wow mm -hmm. again they'll go into mm -hmm. such a violent relationship how can that even happen so this is such an important point um you're just so stellar i love everything that you're bringing up this is awesome Thank you. Um, this, <laughs> there are two reasons why this happens. The first is that we have um, like natural programming, not, not even matrix programming, but we have unhealed aspects, our shadow aspects that, that are those parts that we haven't healed, those parts that we haven't brought to light yet. So that we tend, even if we are natural human beings, we tend to repeat the same issues if we haven't done the healing work so that's something that happens but the other thing that is so important is that there is what i call targeting through love relationships this is something that a few other people i've heard speak of um, but it was something that i discovered in my own life was this phenomenon where targeted individuals one way that they are targeted is that negative uh, love slash romantic partners are intentionally sent into the person's life, but via the dark forces, via the, the demonic forces. So this is one uh, thing that happens to some people is that even when they've gotten out of the negative relationship, the dark forces purposely send the next partner who of course seems wonderful uh, when they uh, first meet the person, but it turns out the person is either abusive or has multiple entity attachments, is demonically possessed or etc. And one of the issues that I had, and this is why I discovered this, this um, relationship targeting, was I had multiple relationships where, the, where my partner had a demonic attachment and was possessed. And not in the severe way that I mentioned of my, my mother, um, but that as a clairvoyant, each of those relationships at a certain point in the relationship, there would be an incident where um, I would see a demon over my partner's face. And it was a over different partner. Over the face. Oh, actually over, over the face and not some people talk about seeing an entity or dark shadow or even a face behind them but this was over the face yes it was like an overlay but it was um see-through so i could see the partner's actual face and then this this like spiritual energy this um entity absolutely sure it was demonic each of those times it was demonic because it had the demonic features and each of my partners had different kind of horns one of them had these like big ram's horns the other one had these little stubby stubs um and each of them had these uh each partner had very troubling behaviors that that came out during our relationship but what caused me to leave was each time when uh, I would see this you know, random time, I would see there's this demon and I'd go, oh, I'm out. Like, and after the third time, that's when I said, okay, this keeps happening. I think this is a pattern. So and you then saw I started it three to, times with the, three with different the partners, same, with different partners, three times. Yes. 
And you have yeah. this ability. Not everybody has this ability. Yeah. Have this ability. And and I've heard several yeah. people who, who have seen something like that. But I mean, mm -hmm. you are sure that you saw this. Absolutely. Um, I've had clairvoyant experiences since I was young. And um, but as and as I've gotten older, those abilities have gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. And so those who have developed their intuitive abilities will probably be able to relate to this, that um, that, you know, what it feels like, how it uh, that, that you know what it feels like and what it looks like when it's genuine versus it's just imagination. So do right? you think that those partners were well, demonically possessed or possessed by a jinn or an archon, demon, whatever, demon. a demon? Yeah. So yeah. they were well possessed by a demon, but mm -hmm. they weren't the uh, weren't an actual demon shape shifting or a reptilian right. alien ET being shape shifting. Correct. Correct. I think those other uh, things that you just listed are absolutely possibilities that people can experience. However, in my situation, it was always uh, a person with a demon inside of them or with um stepping into them and controlling them so it wasn't them as human beings it wasn't real it wasn't what they they were born with maybe you don't know obviously we talk about the whole ancestors and and going from generation to generation that could also be but uh, so they're not actual demons they're just possessed just Oh, please excuse that word, but they're but they're possessed by demons, huh? Right. So the person, so in my personal situations, the person was a person, not a demon, shape shifting to look like a person. Right. Okay. Yeah. And what what do you think about the whole? I mean, so many um, researchers have talked about these alien beings from other worlds. Um, Shape shift, shapeshifters, mainly reptilian, but probably also other races. What do you think of this whole ET phenomena and the and that whole discussion, which is also a bit complex to say the least, mm -hmm. right? What is actually true? Mm -hmm. What is not? What is mm -hmm. the Earth also? Okay, so I ha do have a few things to say about aliens, um, but I will preface it by saying that I've had way more personal experiences and observations with spiritual beings and spiritual situations. Um, when it comes to aliens, the uh, I have had a couple of um, clients that I've worked with where they've had uh, partners, romantic partners, that were reptilians. And I was able to see this in their photographs. Uh, these are partners that I didn't meet in person, but did photograph readings. And the the clients already suspected. They said, I think this might be a reptilian. What do you think? So they were looking for a second opinion. Um, so compared to the number of clients that have had entity, variety of entity issues, um, I've only had a couple of clients that I've worked with, with the, the reptilian issue where I've actually seen the, the reptilian and and it was a shapeshifter as opposed to a person with an overlay of a reptilian like it was a reptilian pretending to be a person so I've had a couple of those experiences also about aliens in general I think there is a not so good tendency in the new age and truth or movement to believe that all alien beings are benevolent and that they are coming to save us. And I think we need to use more discernment. I'm not saying there are no benevolent beings. Uh, I can't say that for sure. But I, I think, like, let's be real here. There are so many agendas upon agendas upon agendas, spiritual and alien and human, dark forces human, uh, 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 you know, uh, just all, all of these levels. And so when it comes to aliens, if we're really being real and reasonable, we can assume that they also have a lot of agendas 
and that there are beings, alien beings, that say that they are here to help us who have other agendas that maybe are not so good. And I think that's just common sense. We, we need to recognize that. So if there are alien beings that are coming through wanting to channel messages to us, I think we really need to question that. I uh, One of my more recent Jinn experiences, false light, Jinn shapeshifter experiences, was uh, when I went to, to a New Age bookstore a couple of years ago, there was a jinn that was hanging out there pretending to be whatever was being channeled at the channeling events at the New Age bookstore. And uh, this thing tried to follow me home. And um, now jinn do not respond to boundaries, even though I set a boundary and said, no, you're not allowed to follow me home. Uh, they don't respond to that. So in the middle of the night, I was woken up by this thing and I, I already knew how to recognize jinn. So um, I think it was really surprised that I wasn't fooled by it because it literally woke me up and it said, we are the council of Orion. We know that you are a, 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 a genuine truth seeker and that you've been looking for answers and we would like to channel messages through you and it would make you like such an important person and you would be seen, you know, it was trying to like activate my ego, which is not going to work for me. And it was saying, you can trust us or they, it was saying, you can trust us, you can trust us. And this went on for a couple of hours. This thing was so persistent. And how did you I communicate was, with it? Was it in front of you? Did you hear it? Was it, it was feeling? All around, it was it was all around me pretending to be multiple beings. And this is something that we need to understand about Jinn that really fools people. They think if there's a council of beings that appears to them, how can that be one Jinn? But I've seen that so many times with myself and my clients. They, so this, so it was surrounding my bed. Okay. So I'm sitting up in bed and it's like all of these alien council beings saying we are the council and we are here to share these messages so there were you. many entities if many. it felt like that around the bed around the bed we're trying to around communicate with you and i said i don't trust you i don't think you are who you say that you are and go away and it kept saying you can trust us you can trust us you need to believe and i'm like nope 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 and then in the morning so then I went to sleep in the morning, it appeared again, and it appeared as a group of demons. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is this is very clever. So it tried to activate my ego and try to get me to do this important work, and that didn't work. So now it's trying to scare me. And by the way, I don't walk through my day like seeing multiple entities all the time. But when I'm having a gin encounter, when I'm having an actual gin encounter, that's when there's like all these entities around and that's how it how how my experience has been and that that really made me realize and understand how, why it's been so easy for even very discerning people very discerning uh, seekers truth seekers to be fooled by this because i uh, even though i knew about jen i was just observing this whole thing and thinking wow this thing is trying to be so convincing and I could totally see how even people who know about Jen would be fooled because it was persistent and just absolutely convincing. I so, can totally relate to what you're saying because I had the okay. same kind of experience. Same yeah. thing that you just mentioned yeah. there many years ago. That's a whole other story, but it just confirms exactly the same type of experience I had. I just didn't know that maybe one jinn demon or whatever you call it could multiply or be pretend to be many a whole council of of people uh, of well beings uh yeah. don't you think that more entities could be could have been involved or was it just that one entity so um my sense and my knowing and my belief regarding that story was that it was one one being i i consolidated the story there were actually multiple steps where it pretended to be this group of beings and then that group of beings and it was it just went through the whole gamut until it went to the alien thing 
Um, and I genuinely believe it was one being. And is it possible for an alien to present itself and want to share messages? I, I'm an open-minded skeptic. I think anything is possible. I think that, that sure, uh, that could probably happen, that, that maybe that is happening. But in my observation with all of these gin situations, it's my belief that 80% of the messages that are being channeled whether it's angel channelings, alien council channelings, and everything in between, 80% of those channelings are actually coming through jinn and other types of shapeshifter entities who are just messing with us and having a grand old time um, causing us to chase our tails and believe in all of these things. And the, the idea is, it's this 80-20 thing again, that there are all these channeled messages with 80% lovely, lovely truths and 20% false information. Because who would believe it if it's 100% false? It doesn't, it's, it's not believable. And this is how even human beings who are abusers, who are narcissists, um, sociopaths, etc., they also will do this 80-20 thing, like where they will tell all of these, you know, wonderful things and they'll insert the lies. That That's a very common human tactic as well as false light tactic. I just want to clear up something for, for people here. You specifically always or mainly mention jinn or the jinn. But I mean, a lot of times people talk about archons and demons, Shizahuri and other uh, names that they put on it. Would you say there is that the same kind of entity, demon, mm -hmm. archons, jinn, or is there a difference in your opinion? Mm -hmm. This is a great question, and I've thought about it a lot since we set up our interview. I have never encountered an entity that called itself, th that referred to itself as an archon. I'm not saying that they don't exist. Um, I'm saying that I've never encountered anything that uh, I perceived as being an archon. However, when it comes to jinn and demons, I very firmly believe that they are totally different entities. That jinn are these plasma beings that can shapeshift into a variety of beings, including multiple beings at once. They um, love to cause chaos. They love to be worshipped. They're psychopaths, etc. And then there are demons that are part of the demonic hierarchy that, um, and here's where it gets confusing, is I've seen jinn pretend to be demons, and then in the next second pretend to be an angel, and then pretend to be Jesus. And so jinn can pretend to be anything, anything. Um, but demons, I do believe that they are a separate race of spiritual beings. I can't say for sure exactly uh, historically where they have come from. I personally don't believe in the exact Judaic Christian story of like where all of the angels and the demons came like that, that whole mythology. Um, I question that. So I don't know where like the origin of demons but i've seen so many of them and i've had issues with being targeted by demonic forces since i was born so there's been uh, this whole lifetime of uh, demons the first time that i remember seeing a demon was when i was um, 16 years old and um, it showed up and it said satan is my savior now, I don't know what I think about Satan. I'm just going to say, I don't, I don't really know what I think about that being, but this is what the demon said. And uh, so throughout my life, I've seen all of these beings and not just seen, but we also need to pay attention to how do we feel when we are, are around a certain entity? Now, not everyone is clairvoyant. We can't all see, but we might be able to feel that a presence is near. And I just want to encourage everybody that if you are having entity experiences to notice 
how you feel and notice your inner knowing. Does it, do you know, or do you feel that it's a demon or does it feel like something else? Could it be a trickster? And the other tricky thing is that demons also do some shape shifting, but in my observation, they are not as masterful at shape shifting as, as Jin. Like Jin are the masters of shape shifting into like all sorts of things, like anything under the sun. Uh, whereas, um, you know, demons, I've, I've seen them shape shift, but I just, it's not as prominent as with Jin. Like Jin, that's their MO. Uh, they are either these plasma beings or they're shape shifting. Whereas demons, I've, most of the time, I will see them showing up looking as demons. You just talked about knowing, uh, uh, well, a knowing, a knowing within. And that brings me to them. Well, inner knowing. And that brings me to the Gnostics. And it was the Gnostics that introduced yes. that word, the archons. And yes. it was it was described very much in the same way as you're describing the jinn. Yeah. And the jinn is, of course, known in the in the Muslim beliefs, you know, in the yes. in the Quran, and it's mentioned there. Yeah. And we know jinn from genie in the bottle, and uh -huh. the you know all of these things. Even even I think the liquor jinn, the the spirits, the spirits, spirits, jinn, mm -hmm. spirits, mm -hmm. spirits. You know, mm -hmm. even the same thing is interesting. There's a lot of uh, words and symbolism for words and descriptions, as we know as well. So it could be the same thing. Yes. But it is interesting, though, I that agree. you have never uh, encountered, uh, uh, well, an archon, but they, but I, I, I guess the, the jinn don't introduce themselves and say, hello, I'm a jinn. Well, so, um, I'll, I'll say I agree with you that uh, when it comes to archons versus jinn and how I've considered this question for a few years, actually, as I've watched all of your videos on your channel, that I've been like, okay, I've had all these encounters with jinn. Is it possible that archons is just another word for what I'm calling jinn, right? Um, so that's I, I think that's very possible. Now, when it comes to demons and jinn, I definitely don't put them in the same category. Uh, so, our many people do, demon. though, which is also yes, interesting. I, know. I don't know if you saw that episode we did with a a shaman, a British shaman who lives in oh. Thailand, where, wherever he's uh -huh. he is now. But he works. He's a voodoo priest. But he's doing voodoo. Mm -hmm. he, he explained on the show how he's doing voodoo for good. And he's working with the jinn, which he calls good entities that works uh -huh. through him. And that is a very, well, isn't that interesting, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, unfortunately, I didn't see that one. Um, I have the ultimate respect for... Um, every healer who is trying to do good in the world. And so I don't think it's my job to say that, you know, anybody is wrong for doing whatever they're, they're doing. Um, I do have a, uh, my own strong belief that I personally would never in a million years call upon Jin to do anything. Um, I have found them to be the most dangerous out of every type of entity that I've encountered. Um, they, they are the most difficult to get rid of. And they're very tricky in that if you set boundaries with them, then they, uh, they lash out. Like the story that I told about going to the new age bookstore and um, having that experience with the, the gin that followed me home, I actually had a very informative but upsetting scenario where in the days that followed, I was very forcefully insisting that that gin leave. And now if a person or an entity is mentally ill, psychopath type of personality, and you set a strong boundary with them, what do you think they're going to do? Well, within two days, uh, my my cat was dead. So, 
And I won't go into all of that, but I genuinely believe it was a result of the gin and of setting, thinking that I could set the same kind of boundaries that I do when I'm clearing demons or uh, uh, evil spirits. Yeah, but can you set true. boundaries? Can you just say, "I have a, uh, I am protected. I have my own shield around me. I am protected by good. I stand in my own truth. I have free will. I will not have you, evil entity, invade me or possess me or in any other way." I mean, this is definitely what a lot of people in this mm -hmm. truth or in spiritual movement will mm -hmm. will say. Also to you, I'm sure. We mm -hmm. can do that. We can protect ourselves. They are not allowed inside. But you contradict that. Yep, I do. And I'm not trying to burst anyone's bubble or make anyone feel bad. Uh, I actually talk about a lot of the myths, a lot of the spiritual myths in my um, second book, The Psychic Attack Source Book. Uh, there are a lot of beliefs that that feel comforting and help us feel better. But the... Uh, my experience over and over again has been that I've had clients and students come to me who are very upset and confused because they believed what you just described. They've, they absolutely believed I am protected. I am a high vibration being. I'm setting boundaries. Nothing, nothing can do anything negative to me without my permission. And yet they were brutally attacked. And now they're going through existential crisis because they don't understand how was that allowed to happen? And yet it was. So um, back to our previous conversation where, where we talked about, you know, why are these things allowed to happen? There are a lot of really bad things that happen on the planet beyond spiritual warfare. There are, you know, horrible atrocities happening on the planet. Why is that allowed to happen? All of these things are happening. And yet in our own little bubble, um, you know, in our in our safe apartment, we think that if we just affirm, then everything's fine. But you know, the person who's starving or or experiencing genocide and getting murdered, um, they didn't agree to that. They they were hoping that they wouldn't ha be tortured, and yet that still happened to them. But I but think, do you in think our... they could have agreed to a soul contract before. Uh, coming into a new body with a wiped memory, yeah. perhaps done by these gins or, or archons in that so-called heavenly realm. Yeah, I believe that sometimes we do choose to experience adversity and sometimes terrible adversity as a way of deepening our soul. And when we're outside of human incarnation, it's like, oh, yeah, I think I'll have a terrible illness. That sounds great. It's on the menu, you know. But once we're living it, it's just awful and we hate it. Uh, but when we're in the spirit realm, like we have that different, that that more advanced perspective. But I also believe that there are plenty of other times when soul contracts are hijacked, where negative um, life events are imposed upon us uh, that, and that's outside of our free will. So let me just ask you, Maya, could the following diseases, I'm going to mention a list here, uh, but could diseases and illnesses in general be caused by these dark entities, malevolent jinn, archons, or demons? And can the body be healed from that if it is caused by those entities? How can we clear the body from those sicknesses, illnesses, and diseases? For example, um, this is more uh, psychological, but uh, I also have a list of physical problems. But psychologically, anxiety, compulsive fear seances, or sudden angst, could those things be caused by, by those dark entities? Uh, this is another fantastic question. I absolutely do believe that our health can be impacted by not only energies around us, by, but entities and like the collective umbrella of dark forces interference. So let's say there's a person who's been a targeted individual. They've been targeted by certain elements of the dark forces throughout their life. And they, um, let's say some of that targeting 
has been focused toward their relationships. So they've had these negative relationships coming in and some other targeting has come in through um, having entity attacks. So entity interference, like direct paranormal interference. And another aspect of their um, uh, targeting has affected their health. So there's been direct targeting, either spiritual or man-made through some of these technologies, targeting the person's health, certain element of their health. It could be their their mental health. It could be their physical health. Um, I've experienced this myself where I've had a lot of issues with my kidneys. I, I was feeling so much better. I posted on Facebook, hey, I'm feeling so much better. And then within five minutes, I your 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 sound is gone. Huh? Okay. I hear me? Now, yeah, now I can hear you louder again. Okay. And you can hear me? Okay. So wow, that's what an interesting moment, wasn't it, Maya? Uh, yes. So what I was gonna say is that I posted that I was feeling better, like, hey, I've had this breakthrough, I'm a lot better. Within five minutes, I was standing right over there in my living room, and I suddenly heard and felt a vibration. I could hear it in my right ear. I felt it coming into my body, and I thought, I, I wasn't sure if it was black magic, if it was spiritual, like uh, straight out spiritual, or if it was directed energy weapon, but I knew something was happening to me. And within the next 20 minutes, I went into the worst kidney flare up I've ever had. And I was in like physical torture for about two weeks. Wow. And so Did you suffer I, from high blood pressure? No, uh, but I was having um, um, kidney, it was passing multiple kidney stones all of a sudden. Uh, but I was feeling great, before, like I was better than ever. And um, so, and I've seen this happen with clients as well. I have uh, students currently in my program who deal with uh, direct attacks upon their, their health, whether it's a chronic illness or cancer, uh, it's been directly related to some type of entity attack or dark forces attack. So I was going to ask you about uh, cancer as well, because this is yeah. what we're seeing in so many different forms happening to people all all around around the world, like a pandemic with the whole cancer thing. First, yeah. I asked you about anxiety, compulsive fear, seances, and sudden mm -hmm. angst. Could that be caused yeah. by these demonic entities or the jinn? So all all of what you just listed can be caused by a variety of different kinds of entities, Jin being one on the list. It could also be caused by directed energy weapons, since we were just discussing that. Uh, a person could also be an empath who's picking up on you know the collective, whatever energies are going on in the collective. So there's a lot of reasons why that anxiety. But the if someone has a sudden onset of anxiety so it's not chronic anxiety but all of a sudden they're overcome by anxiety that can be a signal that there is an entity or an energy that has just entered into your field and your physical your your physiology is picking up on that and your heart rate is going up and there's chemicals being produced in your body adrenaline and everything as a response even if your brain like even if you're not clairvoyant or psychic and you don't know that there's an entity, your body is perceiving that something foreign is in your energy field. So and can, if you, and have, can you deny it access immediately and get rid of it? Yeah. So that's a really good question. When something is first beginning to enter your field, that is the time when it is the easiest to clear it. Now, it depends on the entity. Some things are harder, but most of the time you can clear it before it comes all the way in. So if you start to sense that something might be happening, definitely stop what you're doing and address it right away instead of waiting till later that night. It'll be a lot easier to clear if you address it immediately. Okay, great. And what about uh, sleep sleeping disorders like sleep paralyzes, sleep mm -hmm. apnea? sleeplessness, sleep mm -hmm. anxiety, 
returning nightmares, lucid dreaming, or out-of-body experiences? Could that be caused by these uh, malevolent entities? All of those can be caused by, uh, by a variety of entities, and some of those can also be caused by physical disorders as well. So when it comes to discerning if there's something spiritual going on in your life, you want to always ask yourself the normal mundane questions. And I'll compare this to like, if the light is flashing in your house, don't assume that there's a ghost. Go and check and see if the light bulb needs to be changed first, yes. right? So, <laughs> yeah. so that's what I would say about that, that list of sleep disorders. Like just, you know, make sure there's nothing medically going on. Uh, sometimes it's just a medical issue. Sometimes it's just, it is solely a spiritual issue. And sometimes it's some of both. So yeah, but if what you about have sleep them, paralysis? I think you even right. said, not, maybe not on this show, but I, in my research before the inter sleep interview, paralysis. you, you talked about sleep, uh, uh, paralysis, right? Or yes. What's it called? So when it comes to sleep paralysis, paralysis, I believe that. Okay. Yes. Sorry. So that's okay. So I believe more times than not, that is spiritually related. So sleep paralysis can happen when you have astral traveled and your spirit is having trouble fully getting back into your body. And so your consciousness is awake, but your body isn't connected like to your soul. And so you can't get everything to move. That's one reason for sleep paralysis. However, another reason for sleep paralysis is that there's entity interference. And this is especially true if you wake up and there's an entity ho hovering over you or on top of you. That's definitely not the first thing that I just described, but it's direct entity interference. There's um, not too much that you can do in the moment when sleep paralysis is happening, but if you have had issues with it, you can do a variety of things to protect yourself before you go to sleep, uh, like putting uh, good quality frankincense oil on your feet, on your brow chakra, on your crown, just, just to help protect your energy. Uh, and this might sound weird, but salt is one of the cheapest and easiest things that you can use. Uh, that um, it helps deter entities because they have trouble engaging when they're salt. So people who've so what, had a lot where of do you place the salt? I, I've, I've had them put it either under their pillow or if they're having major spiritual warfare at night, they've actually poured salt all over their bed. Now that can be a little bit uncomfortable to sleep on. So they'll pour it on their mattress and then put the mattress cover on top of that so they're not get, having salt stuck to them. So they're literally sleeping on top of a bed of salt. And that's helping disrupt some of that um, negative spiritual activity. And so, so what that's about, really so what about Maya? I don't know if you know about this. What about sleep apnea where people don't breathe during long yeah. periods of time during the mm -hmm. night? And this is a common thing. Lots of people have it. Yeah. So I think sometimes this can be just a straight out medical disorder, but other times there actually are different kinds of entities. Um, I wouldn't say that jinn necessarily do this, but other kinds of uh, demons that like to feed off of humans' energy, uh, they will tend to hook in via the mouth and source life force energy, source breath through the mouth. So that is something that can be happening with sleep apnea. But again, other times it's just straight out sleep apnea. So use your inner guidance. So we have to distinguish what is actually a physical attack from a, from a, from a demon or an entity or what is actually a medical mm -hmm. problem and, and seek mm -hmm. help for, for that. What about autoimmune diseases and things like that that yeah. also occur? For, for yeah, people. I can relate to that one. And I do think that some people who are targeted individuals uh, do end up acquiring uh, autoimmune issues. Um, I think there's another issue to autoimmune issues, which is that when someone has experienced a lot of trauma, whether it's paranormal trauma or not, if 
they've experienced a lot of trauma, childhood trauma or adult trauma. Their body continues to be affected by that. And they've done studies that have shown that people who've had history of adverse childhood events have ended up having a, a high likelihood of autoimmune issues in their adulthood. But I also genuinely believe that uh, there can be an issue with targeted individuals who, uh, who are regularly having their energy harvested. So they have chronic fatigue um, and other kinds of issues where they can barely function because their their energy is being siphoned in order to, um, you know, just the, the human race in general, in order to keep us from living our full potential. So this is what's happening specifically with these people. And when you say targeted individuals, you don't mean targeted, let's say, military technology right. done by certain groups within high-ranking circles of the military huh? against certain right. people. Yeah, so I'm using that term in a broader sense than just military targeting. Uh, so I'm including that, but also including the aspect that there are many people who are highly targeted by, let's say, demonic forces or other spiritual forces where, you know, this, this person has just been blasted their entire life by negative spiritual forces or throughout their ancestry. And this is what I would re refer to as a targeted individual. Uh, I would put it into that category as opposed to someone who has experienced like one standalone unusual paranormal event. But uh, I guess we all come in contact with somebody who has either borderline personality dis disorder, and there, there are different levels of that, and certainly narcissists huh? and psychopaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to be clear with everyone that I'm not a mental health specialist, so I'm not coming from that perspective, but from the perspective of a spiritual worker, I feel that, that there are a couple of different scenarios. First, I do believe that um, some mental illness is actually caused by, uh, well, by trauma, by the effects of trauma, but also by um, imbalances of brain chemicals. I do believe that it can just simply be that. I also think there are scenarios of mental illness where there wasn't originally the imbalance of brain brain chemical imbalances, but that there, the person um, ended up with some entity attachments and the entity attachments actually caused the brain imbalances. And then, so it's the entities feeding into causing the mental illness and then the entities are able to feed off of that energy of suffering and it's, it's a whole feedback loop. Please tell the audience how they can get rid of these things, because now we, we, we've we discussed this, that this could happen to everybody. You cannot even just mm -hmm. shield yourself necessarily and say, this won't happen to me. And, uh, and this can cause diseases and lots of different things. First of all, you have to discover and you have to really go deep within and use your discernment and, and whatnot, your gut feeling and intuition. Is this really, could this be a demonic attack or by a djinn or something? And and categorize it as, as such and seek the right healing. But can you get rid of all of those entities? Because that is the solution that everybody want to hear, right? Yes. So I have worked with a lot of people in helping them completely and permanently get rid of entity issues or um, almost entirely, right? So that, and I say almost entirely because like for the rest of their life, they still have to be watchful and not just go into really dangerous environments, right? Um, sp spiritually dangerous environments, but it is absolutely possible. Uh, but one little difficult piece of information that a lot of people don't want to hear, a lot of people want a quick fix, like just do this one prayer, do this ritual, and everything will be gone. But what I have found is that it's a combination of daily cleansing, 
So burning frankincense is a really good form of cleansing. It's more powerful than sage. Um, salt baths are really good. If you have entity attachments, that helps to cleanse your aura. So daily cleansing, daily grounding and, sun and connecting with your spirit. You have to be in your body. If you are checked out, you're never going to get clear of these entities. And if there's something emotional making you want to check out, you need to work on that. You need to work with a therapist or work with a friend on why you're wanting to check out. So also um, da a daily routine of connecting with your spiritual allies, whatever that is for you. So um, I equate this to if you're under, if you have met, if you met somebody for two minutes at a cocktail party and you got their phone number and then uh the next week your car broke down at 3 a.m and you call them and you say hey i need help and uh, they're like who the heck is this i'm not coming and picking you up in the middle of nowhere uh that's the, the same is true with our spiritual allies if you do work with allies you need to develop a relationship with them so that if you do find that you're under attack that you can um, have that extra spiritual assistance because you yourself have a lot of power in and of yourself, but it's also helpful. I find that it's helpful to have helpers on the other side as well. And I know- But how do people... we know that the helpers and the allies on the other right. side are not, you know, gin posing as allies and, right. and helpers and guides? Right. That's what I was just gonna say, is that when you're first starting this journey, a lot of people, as they're developing their discernment, will choose to just work with their own soul and just work with their own energy so um, when you're first starting this journey, it's okay to not work with any guides, not work with any allies, just work with your own spirit. But over time, once you develop your confidence and your ability to discern what is false light and what is genuine, you might find it beneficial to have a few allies, sometimes less is more, and that's totally up to you. So that's an option. And the final thing that I'll say it, for getting totally clear of these negative spiritual issues is to work on root causes. So root causes can include addiction issues that need to be addressed. If you have addiction issues, entities might really like you. So you really need to do your work uh, with your therapist, your 12-step program, if you have past trauma, which pretty much everyone on the planet has past trauma. If you have past trauma, entities love to hook into that. They, they love to use that against us. So it's very important to work on healing your inner trauma. That's basically a lifelong process. Um, so it's important to keep doing your inner work and look at your relationships. Are there any relationships that might be allowing uh, these infestations to come into your life. Uh, what I recommend is, if possible, reducing contact with those people. If possible, I mean, maybe your your coworker you can't get away from them, uh, but anybody that you can reduce contact with who's who's possessed or infested, try to stay away from them. Um, so it's this multi-step process of working on yourself, of grounding, daily cleansing. And um, if you were to ask my students right now uh, what they would recommend, and they were just talking about this the other day, that consistency is the key. A lot of people think you need to just do clearing, self-clearing once or a couple of times, and then it goes away. But actually, you need to do, if you're under attack, if you've had 10 years of psychic attack, you're not going to get rid of it in a day. So think of your daily cleansing as equivalent to self-care, brushing your teeth, brushing your hair. It's just part of your routine. So you can't be lazy. You have to work on this. Yes. I always tell people you have to be, um, it's really good to be stubborn if you're getting rid of entities, uh, like I love that I'm a stubborn person, I'm persistent and tenacious and I'm not gonna stop. 
and uh, they actually will will do little mind control things to try to get us to stop doing the clearing. Like they'll they'll um, raise up a bunch of drama in our life so we don't have the bandwidth to do our clearing, and we have to stay focused and stay the course. And finally, just before we go, we must, of course, include your website address and and you can mention your books as well. Please do that. Great. That's great. All right. So if anyone would like to learn how to work with me, there's a variety of ways that you can do that. And you can go to my website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com and click on work with Maya. And you'll see a whole list of different ways that you can work with me. There are also links to my books on that page as well. There's a free Facebook group and just all sorts of resources from free all the way to my premium group program. So there's just a lot of choices for support. Great. We have so much more to discuss and there are so many topics we did not get to go into and and talk about i hope we can do that at another in a, a, at another session here and do another episode because right. uh, i'm i know there's much much more but uh we have to end for now and it's been really amazing it's been wonderful hearing all of your thoughts and it's been a great debate and a good discussion here and i i really enjoyed it thank you so much maya sahira for being on age of truth tv it nope. was so great talking with you today thank you so much this was so interesting wasn't it we really got yeah. you know around things you know that that was very good thank you so much for having me and until next time and many blessings to you lucas you guys have a great day Thank you very much to Maya Sahira and thanks to all of you for watching Age of Truth TV. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. You can also sign up for our newsletter on our website, ageoftruth.tv as well. Please also subscribe to our alternative channels on BitChute and Brighton. Your support is greatly appreciated and very needed. And on behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.